Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our uh, today's uh, class uh, uh, when we are going to talk about uh, using economic calendar. In previous classes we went uh, through a number of uh, important uh, tools that are used in predicting market, uh, uh, future market action and uh, today we are going to in a way complete this uh, picture by uh, talk, talking more about uh, economic calendar. Uh, this uh, falls in the group of uh, fundamental analysis uh, and is uh, equally important as technical uh, tools as well as uh, news and all the uh, things that fall into that group. So basically uh, what we need to know uh, about market movements so we, we need when we want to know about future market movements pardon then we need the complete information and the, all factors that uh, could affect the market uh, so if we miss uh, one we may not have uh, correct information or we may miss completely the move uh, because sometimes it happens that uh, news that come releases of economic indicators uh, uh, completely uh, offset uh, positive signal uh, from the technical analysis and the uh, uh, market moves in the opposite direction uh, from expected. So uh, incomplete information could uh, produce us uh, uh, troubles, could result in losses in our trading. Uh, and it's uh, very important uh, to uh, get all the relevant information uh, that uh, uh, is available to create uh, uh, the best uh, approach uh, to the market uh, action and see what uh, get the, the best uh, the most accurate information about uh, a future market movement so as we said uh, uh, there are two uh, the key types of uh, analysis technical and fundamental. Uh, there are some uh, traders, uh, market participants, uh, who say that uh, using only technical and the technical is uh, something that is older than fundamental. In a way, I would uh, agree. In a way, I would disagree because uh, I use also heavily technical uh, tools, but uh, a combination of both uh, will give you the most uh, uh, relevant and accurate information. So bear in your mind that uh, once you have uh, the best information, you will have the best results. Anything that is missing uh, could uh, uh, cause a problem. Uh, set uh, tools of technical uh, technical analysis uh, uh, provide us uh, quite uh, valuable and accurate information and uh, we can depend on this in uh, uh, generating uh, trading signals, seeing market uh, direction, general trend, uh, uh, sub-trends, uh, corrective actions and all these things. And when using uh, uh, technical analysis we get uh, a quite clear picture where the market is uh, moving and what could be expected uh, in the near or uh, near future or uh, longer term, depending on, of course, the uh, type of uh, trader and the type of uh, trade. Uh, but uh, combination of uh, both uh, type of analysis, uh, as I said uh, previously, is going to give us uh, the best and the most complete information. So it is important uh, to uh, know that uh, combination of, of all available tools uh, will always uh, give better information than using uh, only one or two. Uh, it's uh, best to combine technical and fundamental tools, uh, all available information that are in the market. Uh, so that will give us the most accurate uh, picture about the current market situation and expectations uh, for the future market movements as uh, all traders are looking. Uh, the main question is uh, where euro is going or where dollar is going. So uh, we have to know uh, how the market will act and uh, react on certain uh, events. Uh, and uh, economic indicators uh, and news are the things that are important and that uh, should not be ignored, uh, should be always incorporate, incorporated in our uh, analysis so we can uh, get uh, the most accurate information when predicting uh, future market movements. Uh, news are the part, one, one of the uh, tools that are used and that they are market movers also, uh, especially when it comes to the economical or political news, uh, they are uh, in a way top events uh, uh, of the market and uh, 
uh, release uh, could have sometimes a very significant impact uh, to the market. Uh, if you remember uh, case uh, last year with the North Korea launching uh, missiles, I was I always mention this because it was quite significant uh, that during the weekend uh, they were launching missiles and uh, on Sunday opening market uh, was just getting crazy on the reaction on this. Uh, Political news are quite important, uh, especially those that are related uh, to uh, geopolitical uh, news, such as conflicts uh, in the always troubled Middle East or elsewhere. So there are things that uh, uh, move the market. But uh, sometimes uh, uh, release uh, of the news uh, could have uh, different market uh, reaction, market could uh, react uh, in a mixed way. So uh, this presents a da danger for uh, traders. If we, let's say, know exactly what will be the news on the, on the expectations uh, and assume that, let's say, dollar will go up, uh, uh, usually the market uh, reacts uh, in that direction if news comes, of course, uh, according to expectations but uh, very quickly could change the direction and there are a number of samples uh, showing this. Uh, so it could uh, catch you off guard uh, on the wrong uh, foot. Uh, let's say the market uh, moves higher and uh, you jump in and buy and all of a sudden market turns uh, to the opposite direction after uh, uh, big traders uh, already took the profit from this or those scalpers or uh, those intraday traders who are uh, going for a few pips uh, uh, profits and then a huge number of uh, traders like this uh, could uh, quickly change the sentiment of the market and reverse the price in the opposite direction uh, catching you uh, at the wrong foot and uh, uh, increasing risk of uh, creating uh, losses so uh, this is uh, basically uh, one of the market uh, mantras that is uh, very uh, common and very popular. It's uh, buy, buy the rumors, uh, sell the facts. Uh, uh, there is a grammatical mistake in the text, I apologize. Uh, but uh, this is uh, basically the, the true, the fact uh, how the market reacts on the news. So uh, usually on some expectations uh, that something will be released and uh, most of uh, market participants already have uh, certain knowledge and the strong expectations uh, they already start building the positions in that direction so once the news uh, uh, comes out uh, the reaction could be either mild could jump for some uh, significant uh, uh, number of pips and then quickly reverse higher because uh, they were already building up this position uh, for some time in expectations of the release of news and they just collect the profits. So it is uh, quite uh, dangerous uh, to uh, trade only on news, though there are plenty of uh, news traders in the market, uh, some uh, successful, some not. Uh, it's a way of trading that uh, requires a lot of uh, attention, uh, a fast trading uh, uh, in and out and uh, I wouldn't recommend it uh, for uh, those who are beginners or uh, just uh, new traders uh, without big experience. So uh, let's leave it for uh, some uh, experts or pro traders, those who like it. Uh, uh, we are uh, going and uh, we maintain this uh, style from the beginning of our classes, uh, uh, going for a sort of textbook trading. So we are going to follow uh, rules uh, one by one. And uh, this is uh, uh, very likely to uh, reduce the risk to the minimum. This is the, actually our aim, uh, to reduce the risk, risk uh, and to increase the uh, possibility of uh, profits uh, by using all these available tools uh, that uh, you can find uh, in our platform, in the, in the net. So uh, there are plenty of uh, information that you can collect uh, free of charge from internet. So uh, it's just a matter of knowledge how to collect them and how to use them. This is the most important thing. So since we went uh, through uh, fundamental analysis, technical analysis, uh, uh, various tools of technical analysis using, uh, combining them, today we're going to uh, talk about uh, economic indicators uh, uh, that uh, play a significant role in the market uh, and the releases of these economic indicators uh, usually have uh, a quite strong impact in the market, especially when they come above or below expectation. Uh, sometimes when they something is forecasted at certain level, 
and the actual uh, value comes uh, very close or at the same level, then market usually doesn't react because it was expected, came in line. You can hear uh, these comments, uh, uh, GDP came in line with expectations, so nothing serious happened. So in this case, uh, there will be no uh, stronger consequences in the market, there will be no stronger reaction, but uh, many times when the release uh, beats or falls uh, well under expected levels or previous uh, release, then the market uh, uh, usually goes wild and uh, uh, our currency pair that we are looking for uh, usually goes in the uh, straight line. So this is opportunity to uh, catch a good move, but uh, we need to have an information uh, before it comes, so we have to we have to be informed. Well, what is this? Uh, how it works? Uh, what does this mean? And uh, how the impact on the market uh, will be in various scenarios? So we'll be prepared uh, to react uh, accordingly and minimize uh, risk of. Uh, Losses. Of course, uh, uh, it cannot be always uh, uh, for granted that uh, we will be profitable because market is unpredictable and there uh, uh, could be some other things that are uh, influencing and uh, diminishing uh, the uh, value of our indicator. But uh, generally, uh, indicators, uh, economic and list of economic indicators uh, uh, are very important and have strong impact on the market. Uh, what are the economic indicators? It's the economic data. Uh, usually, as it says, uh, of macroeconomic scale, uh, usually they are released by governmental or semi-governmental or non-profit organizations. Those who are uh, taking statistics, uh, measure the things and then release them on a weekly, monthly, quarterly or yearly basis, depending on the indicator and depending on the country. Uh, there are uh, various, a big number of indicators. Of course, we are going to filter them. We are not going to use all of them because that will be a big confusion. Uh, so we'll focus on the main uh, indicators for each economy, for each country that has the strongest impact in the market, that's the most popular and the uh, uh, results after release uh, uh, could be significant, market movement actually, market action could be significant, so it will give us opportunity uh, to catch that move and uh, make some uh, reasonable profits. Uh, we're talking about uh, labor sector, one of the uh, pillars of each economy, uh, which includes all the uh, data that are inside the employed people, how many new, new employed uh, during the month, uh, what is unemployment, uh, about earnings uh, uh, and the various things that are very important because they indicate about the health uh, of the economy. Uh, higher unemployment always indicates that something is wrong uh, in that economy as uh, more jobless people signal that the economy is uh, uh, in a downside trajectory and the trajectory pardon and the, uh, could signal the further weakening so uh, very important uh, is to watch uh, uh, releases from labor sector uh, the one that is the highlight uh, uh, in the market is of course uh, us uh, non farm payrolls data released uh, every first friday of the month uh, and they show how many people are employed uh, uh, during that month in the all sectors, private and in all governmental sectors except uh, farming, and as well as uh, they release uh, at the same time the uh, unemployment rate, which is uh, important, and uh, earnings. So all combination of all these uh, gives us information how the market uh, uh, would react uh, upon the release of these. Uh, the second thing is the monetary policy. Each country, each economy has the central bank that uh, regulates that monetary policy and adjusts it accordingly, according to the situation uh, in the in the market uh, in the in that economy. Pardon. <clears throat> uh, if we remember the big uh, global crisis that started in 2008. Uh, uh, pushed down most of the world economies. Uh, we're focusing on the biggest one. The United States was the first country to be hit by this crisis and uh, all central banks uh, uh, kept uh, losing the monetary policy, basically lowering the interest rates. Uh, most of them are still holding at zero or below zero, such as Japan or European Union. Some of them started uh, to uh, uh, slightly increase the uh, interest rates, uh, US uh, was the first, as they first 
entered the crisis, they were first to emerge from the crisis. So, uh, U.S. Federal Reserve, the Central Bank of the United States, uh, first started uh, increasing interest rates. Uh, nowadays, we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, troubles for them and the recent the most recent uh, uh, monetary policy meeting of federal reserves which was on 20th of march uh, showed basically uh, the reaction of the central bank uh, that is was quite uh, negative and i will show you later how the market reacted in this so once the economy is doing well the monetary policy will continue tightening meaning that uh, uh, the central bank is going to increase uh, interest rates uh, and uh, this is a positive signal of course uh, a number of factors that are involved uh, need to be uh, at the expected levels inflation is uh, number one so every central bank has uh, projected levels which is usually around two percent plus minus uh, so this is ideal level of the inflation and if the uh, numbers uh, go uh, above or below then we are talking about uh, uh, high inflation or uh, in the opposite side in deflation basically inflation is a quantitative measure quantitative quantitative pardon measure <coughs> of the rate at which the average uh, price level of the basket of a basket of selected goods and services in economy increases over a period of time so basically if the prices uh, of the items increase the uh, purchase value of the one item of the currency uh, will lose the, its value so uh, that means inflation is uh, going up during the crisis inflation was uh, stubbornly low in uh, uh, all uh, biggest uh, uh, global economies so we're talking about the biggest ones now of course the smaller economies were effect affected the australia only managed to escape uh, due to the geographical positions due to being far from these things and the less influenced uh, uh, they are coming now into sort of uh, uh, slowing down and uh, most likely it's going to be delayed the crisis but uh, uh, it's inevitable most likely that uh, uh, they will be hit at the end so uh, inflation is the important thing in and is if the if the const uh, constant rise in the general level of the price uh, uh, if it continues to rise then the currency that buys uh, uh, these products is always less so it means that uh, the inflation is uh, lower and uh, the, the price pardon the inflation is higher and uh, uh, central bank usually takes some action uh, <clears throat> once uh, they spot this uh, in order to stem this uh, uh, inflation uh, because uh, too high inflation is also uh, not <clears throat> uh, not good for the economy we have a good sample in turkey uh, when the national currency uh, collapsed to the all-time low against uh, us dollar at around 7.10 and then eventually central bank reacted there are political issues also there so influence of the politics into the uh, central bank uh, work so uh, they were sort of uh, delayed uh, in react properly so when they reacted uh, in september they uh, increased interest rates uh, uh, 22 or 23 percent uh, to too much the level of the inflation which is also double digit and above 20 in order to stop uh, the collapse of the current uh, country's currency and uh, basically they managed to do it and managed to uh, push uh, higher the turkish lira uh, nowadays uh, we are facing uh, a, another action of the uh, turkish central bank uh, that is again trying uh, to stabilize lira and push it higher after it collapsed uh, uh, last friday so there are plenty of uh, actions uh, of the turkish central bank and the uh, interest rates uh, uh, policy and uh, the monetary policy basically is uh, very important now regarding monetary policy u.s federal reserve uh, on uh, 20th of uh, march uh, uh, expressed uh, their uh, uh, position and opinion and the uh, future action so uh, when they started increasing interest rates uh, uh, there was a strong trend in uh, uh, pushing uh, uh, towards tightening uh, monetary policy 
and signals were good. The uh, U.S. economy was uh, improving uh, greatly, and that in the fast at and at the fast. Uh, Base. But uh, generally, uh, global economies are again facing a slowdown, meaning that uh, uh, crisis is uh, returning back. There are initial signs of this. Uh, so uh, central banks again need to react. <coughs> and the best uh, sample is the reaction of uh, <coughs> the Federal Reserve, who compared to the, their expectations in 2018 that they will continue this trend at a lower pace, but uh, will continue in 2019 with at least uh, two uh, uh, interest rates increases increases in uh, 2019. Now they came with the uh, announcement that there will be no increase of the rates, but uh, there are talks about possible rate cut later on during the year, uh, not confirmed yet, but uh, uh, signaling uh, this uh, turns the overall uh, tone of the central bank from uh, extremely hawkish to extremely dovish and the reaction was uh, immediate. Uh, the dollar was uh, down significantly against uh, most of its uh, uh, counterparts and the most of uh, counterparts benefited uh, strongly on that uh, action. This was on 20th of uh, uh, March. So let me just show you uh, how it worked uh, uh, with the euro, let's say. Uh, this is a euro against a dollar daily chart, uh, 20th of uh, uh, March, you can see uh, down the price and the uh, uh, dates, uh, the euro accelerated strongly uh, on uh, comments uh, from uh, US Central Bank. So uh, reaction uh, was in a way unexpected, uh, they expected some softer tone, but uh, that turn uh, was not expected and uh, uh, most of markets uh, were surprised. Though dollar was already in the uh, short-term downtrend, uh, which accelerated higher, but this is quite a respectable move of over 100 pips, so whoever managed uh, to catch it uh, uh, was lucky to benefit from this and then uh, quickly come out uh, uh, just in case the market uh, reverses the level, because usually the every action uh, sees uh, the reaction. Now, the other important uh, was uh, on 7th of March when the European Central Bank uh, uh, came out uh, at the end of the monetary policy meeting. This is the <coughs> action of that day. We can see one a long red uh, candle, meaning that the euro fell significantly. Uh, after the Mario Draghi uh, had his uh, press conference. Uh, of course, the central bank, uh, as expected, uh, kept the interest rates unchanged. But uh, very important is to listen uh, <coughs> the comments of the top officials of the central bank, uh, what they will say, because they are going to signal the future steps uh, of <coughs> the central bank. And in this case, was again uh, quite dovish uh, uh, turn. Uh, uh, saying that uh, they will be carefully watching that the economy is stable, but the uh, uh, possibility of uh, rate uh, cut is uh, quite uh, uh, high. And uh, this is the thing that uh, pushed euro significantly uh, lower. So again, a good opportunity to <coughs> uh, catch some good uh, profits. Uh, then we had uh, another important uh, uh, action that was basically yesterday. Uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand uh, came out uh, keeping the interest rates unchanged at 1.75%. Uh, this is the lowest uh, uh, record low. Uh, after the crisis, global crisis, uh, uh, they all uh, lowered the uh, interest rates and the only America and the uh, UK managed to increase uh, in uh, some some of the uh, levels of the interest rates, but while other uh, global central banks uh, stayed at their uh, high lowest uh, levels uh, uh, due to lack of uh, firmer signals that economies are improving and the crisis is over. So they have to be very careful with this because uh, pro improper reaction in certain uh, cases uh, could uh, bring uh, more uh, damage than. Uh, uh, could help. So uh, central banks uh, need to be very careful with these things. So uh, Central Bank of New Zealand came and kept rates unchanged, but uh, there was a strong uh, dovish steer, uh, similar to the Federal Reserve and the European Central Bank. Uh, and they said that uh, most likely 
uh, they are going to uh, start cutting interest rates and this resulted uh, the uh, <coughs> this announced resulted in a huge move <coughs> lower of a huge fall of uh, New Zealand dollar against uh, <coughs> US dollar and now if we apply some technical tools on this uh, we can see that uh, for example uh, the move uh, uh, lower uh, retraced uh, over 76.4 percent of the latest uh, up leg uh, that the uh, move penetrated the daily cloud uh, that indicators uh, such a moving averages uh, turned into negative setup that inflate that uh, momentum is uh, weakening and uh, breaking into negative territory that slow stochastic is heading lower so now initial <coughs> reaction of the on the outcome from the central bank was negative and uh, now we combine all these uh, tools in order to get more valuable information taking into consideration that uh, usually a big candle in either color either red or green usually gives either support or pressure to the currency and the bigger uh, the body of the <coughs> candle is heavier pressure or bigger support is so this uh, candle co continues to pressure the uh, currency lower because sentiment has uh, uh, significantly changed we got an uh, information from the central bank that they are uh, going to lose the uh, monetary policy and this is usually a negative uh, reaction on, on this because uh, meaning that the economy is not doing well and uh, that uh, could be uh, further uh, negative steps uh, for the local currency so the traders are prepared for this uh, now when you combine all these tools you can get uh, uh, proper information <clears throat> another uh, important uh, thing is uh, to watch is release of uh, gdp or gross domestic uh, uh, product uh, it's the monetary value basically of the all finished goods and services uh, produced in one country uh, in a specific uh, period of time so if this uh, figure uh, increases meaning that the economy is doing well and it's growing so all the all the sectors in the economy are doing well uh, some better some uh, uh, less good but the overall picture overall uh, result is good so this is a <coughs> positive signal that will uh, push the central bank to start increasing interest rates and this is all connected this is all in chain so when you have a positive release of uh, GDP uh, then you can uh, expect some positive action of the market and vice versa a recent release of uh, uh, I think US uh, GDP data showed that uh, the economy slowed in the fourth quarter of 2018 which is again negative signal as uh, uh, growing signs of uh, crisis returning uh, are increasing and this could be quite uh, negative so uh, focus uh, need to be turned also uh, to the uh, GDP as we said uh, labor sector inflation uh, <coughs> and uh, average earnings uh, are very important uh, this is the amount of money that workers earn in a particular industry area or economy during a certain period of time so definitely a higher uh, uh, earning uh, of the employees meaning that uh, business is doing well that the economy is doing well and uh, <coughs> that uh, overall picture is improving so again this is a positive signal uh, we have a quite uh, interesting uh, situation uh, I'm going to show you uh, this uh, was on uh, uh, NFP was released on 8th of uh, March let me just uh, uh, try to get this on the calendar uh, so it was released on 8th of March because uh, uh, 1st of March was the first uh, uh, holiday first uh, Friday of the month but uh, uh, obviously they were not able to prepare uh, the uh, report so it came 8th of March and then we can see uh, a reaction of the market uh, North Farm payrolls were catastrophic 20,000 new jobs only created in the month of February uh, expectation was for 181,000 and the previous month release was uh, uh, re uh, uh, revised higher from 304,000 to 311,000 so catastrophic uh, uh, result uh, which uh, uh, was initially pointing to 
the uh, to the negative uh, scenario. But if we take a look at the other uh, important uh, uh, releases, unemployment uh, dropped to 3.8. Now, if we take a look uh, at uh, the chart for the unemployment, it's uh, at the lowest levels uh, for years. So we are talking about levels uh, since 2000. So this is a positive signal. Uh, average earnings uh, are uh, were slightly uh, lower than expected. Actually, uh, average earnings, hourly earnings, uh, uh, jumped uh, to 3.4 percent uh, versus 3.3 percent forecast. So uh, these two things, uh, uh, average earnings and uh, unemployment uh, rate, uh, uh, offset negative. Uh, impact from this uh, rather catastrophic, I would say, uh, release uh, of uh, non-farm payrolls. So all these things need to be, be taken into consideration, consideration before we react and uh, uh, do the trade. So let's uh, take a look how the market uh, <laughs> reacted in uh, that case. So that was on 8th of uh, March. It's here. So dollar was slightly lower, the euro was higher, but uh, there was no significant reaction like the previous day on European Central Bank, meaning that uh, negative uh, uh, impact was reduced uh, by the thing. So uh, what I wanted to say is that we need to <coughs> uh, take into consideration all releases and see the combination of them and uh, uh, as they are related also to see uh, what could be expected uh, uh, outcome and what could be the expected the market uh, reaction because uh, since we have uh, forecasts in the calendar I'm going to show you later on <coughs> the calendar itself uh, then <coughs> we can predict uh, future market movements and uh, uh, react accordingly in order to <coughs> <clears throat> to prevent any uh, unwanted scenario, meaning uh, something to be caught at the, at the wrong foot uh, off guard and uh, to produce uh, losses. So since we talk about uh, <clears throat> economic indicators, now we are going to uh, talk about economic uh, calendar as the, all the releases are listed there, that's why it's called calendar. And this is uh, one of the also very important uh, tools uh, for traders. Uh, uh, as uh, uh, we, we all aim towards uh, uh, full and complete and accurate information uh, for the future market movements, uh, <laughs> we need to depend heavily on the, these economic releases because missing one of the uh, factors that heavily uh, affect the market movements uh, could uh, bring us into a situation that we don't have complete information and uh, could uh, uh, catch us off guard, so could uh, rea uh, re uh, result in uh, a negative, uh, uh, negative uh, action, uh, uh, meaning uh, missing the market move, missing market direction. So uh, in order to get uh, the most uh, detailed and accurate information, we need to combine all uh, three, uh, pardon, all two uh, important uh, factors that are uh, market uh, analysis, uh, uh, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and the market calendar as one of the uh, very important uh, uh, tools. Uh, I will show you some samples uh, of the market calendar. This is the economic calendar of Reuters, uh, a professional one. Uh, uh, this is uh, one that you need to buy. Uh, to pay subscription to get it. Uh, so it has a very uh, big number of information. Uh, some some of them are uh, not listed in the other calendars, but could have uh, a quite uh, a good uh, uh, value of info, provide us additional information. Actually, it could add value to the information that uh, we get from the calendar. So we have the uh, date, uh, we have the uh, local time. So in this case, it's a local time. We have country of origin. Uh, you can filter it. Uh, uh, that's important uh, because if you are trading, let's say euro dollar, then you don't need to see uh, things from uh, I don't know from uh, Africa or from South America or whatever. You filter it, uh, narrow it uh, to the desired level. So G10 or G20 uh, 
combination is uh, usually good. Uh, what you can see here, I think it's uh, uh, G20. Then you have the uh, significance of the release. Uh, some of the calendars are showing uh, like one, two, three lines. Uh, some of them are showing different colors. Uh, let's take a look at the, the next one. So this is the one from investing. Uh, you can see that they have these bullheads and uh, uh, more bullheads means uh, more significant uh, information. The less bullheads means uh, less uh, significant information. Then it could be uh, colors uh, uh, that indicate uh, uh, significance of the release. Uh, so. Uh, now we can see uh, Windsor Brokers uh, economic calendar where uh, it's, it's presented by white, yellow and red color. And of course, red uh, uh, shows the most significant uh, uh, releases. Uh, so uh, these are the things that uh, are uh, at the beginning and are important. Uh, uh, there are some other things that are very important uh, in the uh, economic calendar. So let's just uh, take a quick look again on the Reuters one as the most uh, complete. <clears throat> then it comes indicator itself, so it describes what is the indicator uh, period uh, that is released for, in this case we have uh, uh, for the month or for the sec fourth quarter, uh, could be for three months, uh, could be on the annual, annual annual basis, year on year or a monthly basis, month on month. Then we have a, a poll or a forecast uh, that is presented in blue. Uh, then we have actual release that shows the actual release and surprise, uh, this is a quite a good uh, thing. Uh, so shows how the uh, actual release uh, diverged from the expectations and uh, then we have the previous release uh, and the revisions. Uh, uh, so the minimum and maximum according to the expectations. So we have quite a, a big number of information. On the other side, uh, uh, we are not uh, lacking uh, uh, many information as uh, in this case of investing.com uh, 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 calendar, we again have uh, the time. The time is uh, to be adjusted according uh, to your needs. Uh, suggestion is uh, to use the GMT not to have confusion uh, with the uh, releases because if you, for example, live in Australia, then you'll be plus eight hours, seven hours, whatever and uh, it will be sometimes uh, during the night when the European things are released or early morning when American things are released. So it's uh, better to have it in their uh, original, in the neutral uh, time zone, which is GMT, so you can always uh, have the uh, proper time. It's easier to calculate basically uh, rather than calculating from your local time. <laughs> then of course there is a country of origin. Uh, again, you can filter this uh, uh, to according to your needs, not to see all of them. Uh, the currency related uh, uh, to that country uh, and importance, you see, in this case, we have uh, uh, bullheads that are indicating uh, the significance of the release. Again, uh, the name of the indicator itself, uh, uh, forecast, uh, actual, actually, this is release, uh, uh, forecast and the previous. Of course, the color of release uh, gives us indication straight away whether it's positive or negative. In case that there are all uh, levels inside, you can see if there is no forecast, then the release will stay in black because there is nothing to compare. In this case, we have a, a green color, meaning that uh, current release is uh, higher than the forecast and uh, it's better. So usually green uh, color indicates uh, better than expected the release, uh, while red color, let's say in this case, uh, indicates uh, uh, lower than expected and especially the market uh, will react uh, uh, when, uh, mar when uh, <clears throat> uh, these uh, figures come away, uh, away of uh, uh, forecasted expected levels. So if we have something forecasted at five and come it's at 10 or uh, two, uh, then that will be a signal that something is uh, going uh, wrong and uh, <clears throat> that could be a negative signal. Uh, other important <clears throat> release uh, indicator uh, that I didn't mention previously is release of uh, US uh, crude oil inventories. Uh, for those who trade uh, uh, more crude oil uh, is very important. Uh, there are two releases. Uh, one is uh, called, uh, uh, 
One is released on uh, Tuesday, uh, late on Tuesday, and uh, one is released on uh, uh, on Wednesday, uh, the the one I don't see it listed here. It's called API, uh, and the the main one basically is the one that is released on uh, Thursday uh, on the Wednesday. Pardon, uh, it's EIA uh, crude oil uh, stocks. Uh, so it shows the level of the stocks of the crude oil in United States, and this number uh, here shows us that uh, the release was negative what was negative wa was the thing that uh, crude stocks rose increased meaning that there was a lower demand a lower demand means that more uh, more oil stays in storage rather than being used and this is usually negative for the oil price uh, i'm going to show you how it looks uh, on the chart uh, so we can just uh, get uh, pardon crude oil chart and see the reaction was uh, basically yesterday and uh, we can see how the market uh, reacted and uh, what we can expect uh, in the near future let's uh, uh, take a daily chart for example and see so uh, basically this is a uh, US crude oil so we can see that crude oil is stuck somewhere just above uh, around 60 psychological level it was broken two times but without uh, clear break and then yesterday's action was uh, the one in red uh, that came after the release of the crude stocks that came negatively the crude stocks were built for 2.8 million barrels uh, compared to the forecast uh, for draw of 1.1 million barrels so it's a negative uh, uh, signal for the crude oil now in this case uh, it's not enough just this we could uh, catch this move because sentiment has changed uh, of course a limited uh, downside because the oil price remains well supported by uh, other factors which include uh, the production cut from the uh, main oil producers uh, Saudi Arabia Russia and uh, all other members of the OPEC uh, as well as uh, US sanctions on other key producers uh, Iran and Venezuela so this is all supportive for the price so negative impact from uh, uh, crude stocks is in a way uh, limited for now and uh, we have to consult again our technical tools and uh, see how the market could react uh, overall picture is still bullish though we have signal uh, on break below uh, five and ten days moving averages uh, momentum is flat stochastic is flat uh, uh, rsi is uh, sideways so uh, the price uh, will likely hold in this extended uh, range uh, needs to be above 20 days moving average in order to uh, sustain uh, this consolidation before it moves higher because overall trend is still up uh, and uh, most likely is going to extend uh, we can then uh, take a look at the uh, Fibonacci retracements we have uh, the 200 days moving average a strong resistance so we have to take into consideration uh, other uh, factors this is just a sample how we analyze the market uh, based on fundamental and technical tools so uh, initial uh, reaction from the uh, from the uh, economic indicator that is uh, uh, that's uh, uh, US crude stocks is a uh, negative and uh, <clears throat> market uh, was hit but uh, not seriously so we have to uh, watch now the next uh, uh, releases next news next comments uh, how the market will react in the near future uh, it is significant uh, uh, that uh, after being pushed by uh, this uh, uh, weaker than expected uh, in red let's say release uh, uh, market is uh, the crude oil price is now uh, holding within ext extended the range it is significant that it reached uh, psychological 60 level did not manage to break it clearly so we may expect some uh, other hesitation here before the markets market likely proceeds higher because the signal is still bullish overall trend is bullish and uh, uh, we uh, stick to the textbook trading which says uh, trend is your friend so don't 
do not abandon it uh, until it lasts. So, uh, as uh, to summarize now what uh, we were talking, uh, uh, calendar is a very important uh, uh, tool that uh, needs to be uh, used uh, in our trading and uh, uh, should not be missed because there are plenty of uh, important releases. Uh, you can always uh, filter them uh, in your calendar to the most important, to the most significant, uh, uh, focus uh, to the countries of interest. So you can put, let's say, G20 and uh, have the uh, uh, biggest uh, world economies plus some other uh, big economies of the world. So any releases, any release from uh, uh, these countries will be significant. Uh, of course, when there is a uh, red color in this case, or uh, uh, three bull heads or three lines, depending how each calendar uh, design is designed, then it will be a signal for you to uh, pay special attention to the release and as well as uh, uh, the market reaction because uh, more significant uh, release is the more significant market reaction will be upon that release. Of course, uh, uh, if the mark, if the release uh, uh, falls under or uh, heavily beats the forecasted level, because sometimes, as we said, uh, uh, coming uh, at expected levels uh, could uh, uh, re result in the mild reaction. Uh, something else that is uh, very important: uh, you can find these calendars everywhere. Every broker has the calendar in the offer in their site. Uh, uh, big companies such as Bloomberg, Reuters, uh, they provide the uh, calendars. Okay, this is. Uh, with subscription, but uh, what is important is the uh, speed of the update of this uh, uh, calendar. So uh, big brokers uh, usually uh, do not uh, economize with this and they <coughs> buy the uh, calendars uh, uh, which has uh, which have the uh, links uh, to the fast release, fast actually uh, receive of the information. So there shouldn't be delay. If you watch the Windsor Brokers uh, <coughs> calendar, for example, uh, within a few milliseconds, the price after being released, the price uh, will appear there. This is very significant. If you have delay, and most of the free of charge uh, uh, calendars have delay. So if you have delay, then you are greatly missing opportunity to uh, make profitable trade because until your information come on uh, free to air uh, calendar, the market could already be far away from the initial level. And then until you react, uh, maybe too late. So it's very important to have the uh, first class uh, calendar which has the uh, top links uh, the, which has the fast updates uh, that come in milliseconds after being released of course there are a uh, few big companies that uh, handle these all these releases and everyone is uh, buying service uh, from them so if you are buying directly from them uh, or from another big uh, source which is just under them, then you have opportunity to get uh, uh, good service from that calendar, uh, fast service actually, uh, accurate uh, releases and on time, because any delay could uh, uh, cause uh, uh, increased risk of uh, missing opportunity or creating losses, uh, uh, whatever comes uh, as uh, missing it uh, is not good for our trading. So we need to uh, focus on the calendar to summarize uh, what we were talking, a very important uh, uh, tool, combine it uh, with the other tools uh, that we already uh, went through our in our previous uh, classes uh, and only complete uh, the complete picture uh, will come once uh, when you combine all tools of technical and fundamental analysis. Of course, you filter those that are most suitable for you. You are not going to make mistake, believe me. But with the calendar, again, uh, you filter it according to your needs. Uh, focus on those uh, most important. See the releases. Uh, each calendar has uh, explanation. What is this and has the chart? So you can always analyze and see how the certain uh, economic indicator was performing previously. Is it uh, somewhere in the middle or it's on the highest or the lowest levels? That give us further indication uh, how it uh, could be reaction. Now you have the history so you can compare previous releases and you can go to the chart and compare the uh, results uh, with the price action after uh, being released. So uh, you can uh, uh, catch sort of path of the market, uh, how it reacts uh, in the certain 
situations according to the uh, releases. For example, previous uh, release on 20th of March was uh, very significant uh, as it showed uh, nearly a uh, draw of nearly 10 million barrels from the and it was positive reaction of the market, of course. Uh, uh, the next one was uh, completely opposite, as you can see. Uh, the market action was negative, so uh, it's good to uh, practice a bit uh, comparing uh, these uh, movements uh, with the market action. Uh, you can put it uh, parallel on the split screen and see the chart of the given instrument uh, reaction on the chart and uh, after end release from the other side, so you can uh, see how it functions, how it works, uh, and it's good to practice a bit before you start uh, using it. But again, uh, need to repeat that. Uh, only uh, using all tools uh, together uh, will give you the most uh, accurate and the most uh, uh, reliable information about uh, future market movements. And uh, that will be all uh, uh, from my side today.